What's up, Sim Racers? This is Larry at TJR Sim here, and today we're going to look at Forza Motorsport 7 with the AccuForce V2 Pro, and this is going to be without the Sim Commander. I have had some requests asking for my my Forza 7 settings from uh, using my Fnatic V2 or even the 2.5 that it apply to being the same. However, I have sold the V2, and uh, now I'm using the Aggie Force, and I do have the direct drive DD2 from Fnatic coming as soon as it gets here, whenever it gets released sometime uh, April 30th is what the estimated release date is of it, so uh, this will actually be a fairly good setup for that one as well, I believe. Uh, well, who knows, uh, depending on what their software is, but I'm not using SimVibe on it. Let's splash over here to the settings that I'm using and I will tell you that you can actually get some better results with using SimVibe uh, with the Forza 7 than you can without it however I think this will help apply to people that are using the Fnatic V2 and V2.5 as well as uh, someone that don't want to go through the structure of using SimVibe setup so right here is my settings I have it set on responsive and intensity is 100%, smoothing 0, degrees of rotation 900, stop spring 6.3%, and everything else zeroed out. And that is, of course, saved to my controller, which is my wheelbase. So that's the settings I have. As you can see, I'm not running SimVibe at all, nothing launched here. And we'll jump back into Forza 7. Let me give you my settings that I'm using here. Now, I've spent a good uh, over, well, two hours today. I looked at it the other day as well so uh, but what you want to do is I'm in the game right now but it doesn't really matter you can do you want to do it while you're in game so you can test it out on track and I'm just doing a test session out here at Sebring because it's a rough track and uh, Forza tends to have a lot of this uh, power oversteer movement and it's not very natural feeling but Forza 7 has updated their uh, software so as far as their input options, your advanced input options. But what you want to go to, of course, what you just saw me do, what did I do? Controller, <laughs> input options, I've been flying through this so many times here. Uh, go down here to where it says advanced and scroll on down. And you know, really when you're testing this stuff out for your own liking, I suggest you turn vibration scale completely off turn road fill scale completely off. These are just icing on the cake, so to speak. Uh, those two are just what you're gonna feel. Uh, after you get your, your settings set right, you wanna add these in to your liking. And these, of course, are what are to my liking. Now, I can't get it perfect set up. I actually get a better feel with Sim Commander uh, 4 software, but this is pretty, about as good as I'm gonna put the time in to get. Uh, so, you know, a couple hours, today and I don't know how many but another hour or so the other day so anyway uh, let me explain these a little bit further but like I said keep your uh, where's it at vibration scale and road feel off if you're trying to set this up yourself uh, and then go through it one by one set say your force feedback scale at 100 now obviously if you put this up more you're gonna have more uh, a heavier steering wheel and, uh, and I know 100 seems like a lot considering I'm using a 13 newton meter AccuForce, but using my V2 at 100% feels honestly about the same as this AccuForce does at 100%. So uh, it is what it is, uh, and that's just based on all these other settings that also contribute to your force that you would feel. So I think it's pretty comparable. Uh, to the lower end. Of course, I can turn this up and I'm going to get a higher torque feeling than you would on, a, say, a, a belt-driven wheel, a T500, or, or a, you know, the ones I like, which is the Fnatic line V2s, V2.5s. Next one up is aligning torque. This one I have low. This is where you get that torque oversteer feeling all the time when you're going into the curve. Follow my cursor here. See, we're going into, oh, well, I don't have a curve over here, but you're going into a curve and you're braking and you get to a certain little apex of the curve and you're letting off and then you get a torque over steer and your back end comes around on you, right? That is the line of torque has a big factor in that. So I end up turning that down qu 
quite a bit from what factory is. Factory is basically, factory settings are pretty much 100 all the way across. And it's, you can tell it's set up for more of your G29s and uh, uh, G27s and, and, and those, the lower end wheels so you get a lot of uh, feedback and vibration because people tend to uh, sim race Sim racing tends to be over, over uh, uh, stimulated feeling than what you would actually feel in a real car. So, not that I've driven this LMP car before in real life, but at least know what a real car feels like, <laughs> and, and sports cars and stuff like that. So, but a line of torque gets sidetracked all the time here. Line of torque, you want to keep it down a little lower. If you can Mecha uh, mechanical trail scale it says it here to the side here the length of the static lever arm from suspension geometry raising this tends to give a smoother force but less fidelity so uh, you're having a balancing act between filling every nuance in the track and it actually making it smooth and this was kind of a tough one here uh, so I ended up with 185 and it, and it feels really good uh, this is when you're braking really hard on the track and you're you're tires are screaming mercy at you and you get that that hop feeling through your wheel that's really what your mechanical trail scale is, is handling also when you're doing a correction from a, a sliding from the left and it snaps over to the right your steering snaps over as you're trying to steer into something uh, mechanical trail is there as well uh, so you know you, it's a balancing act I went as low as 150 with good results as well and actually when I had my V2 I had it at 150 and when was really liking 150 and I was having the pneumatic trail at 180 with the V2 so that's probably the only difference I remember when I was testing this with the V2 because I did actually test it out oh man I guess I spent a couple hours on the V2 as well but <laughs> once I went to the the sim experience AccuForce I lost track of those settings that I have and I wish I would have did a screenshot for y'all but so that's mechanical trail pneumatic trail this is really where the rubber meets the road literally this is the softness or, or the the feeling you get from the the bounce from the tire I have it all the way up just to put a lot of feeling I like a lot of tire feel and tire flex feel so it's it's by all means it's nowhere close to say like R Factor 2 or Automobilista uh, for us PC guys, but it is uh, it does help out quite a bit. Uh, and so if you take your mechanical trail and your pneumatic trail, your aligning torque scale actually contributes to how these two forces are applied as far as uh, your your wheel aligning itself. So there's a little bit of a balancing act here of of not setting your torque scale up so high that your mechanical tr trail is really gripping so hard that you have this really forceful right left feeling or, or yank on the wheel so you can essentially turn down your torque scale line of torque scale and then up your pneumatic uh, yeah your mechanical trail scale well, not pneumatic but your mechanical trail scale to get a little bit more road feel but less of that torque torque steering okay so it's kind of helpful for that you almost want to a real car doesn't have that much of a torque steer to it unless it's a front wheel drive car and you're you're really getting at it uh, then you do of course have that torque steer but Forza tends to have that torque steer whether you're in a four wheel drive car or you're a real wheel uh, so it's just horrible so this helps eliminate a lot of that so that's that's the thinking behind these three settings here for y'all uh, just so you know uh, road scale. Oh, I'm sorry. And I'll skip road scale feel because, like I said, that's that's just to your liking. I have it at 50. I'm not going to skip it. I'm going to explain it right now. So I have it at 50. But this is basically your curbs uh, that you feel in the curbs. How much of the curb effect do you want to feel uh, and whatnot? That's basically your. And you know when you uh, hit a curb that draws you into the curb. So uh, so anyway, this is what that one does. In contradiction, your vibration scale, I'll just cover this one real quick since I skipped it. That one, sorry this didn't go quite in order, but the vibration scale is really a vibration that you're going to get like on your ABS lockup, that vibration, that chatter you get through your through your wheel. Uh, it actually adds, adds a nice smoothing effect. And uh, so that, that's what I like about it. It adds a nice smoothing effect to, to these forces here. So... Uh, 
Yeah, so vibration scale, you don't want to turn it crazy up too high, but keeping it, I have it on 15 as you can see. So adjust to your liking. So I can explain it all day long, but you're going to adjust this the way you like it. Everybody's different. All right, going down to the wheel damper scale. Really, this one only needs to be as high as you, as it takes to eliminate your oscillation. Your oscillation is when you're going down the track itself, your wheel is going left, right, left, right, left, right. If it's doing it abnormally from what a real car would do, uh, it's this is what you want to increase. So I have it on 25, and this tends to work in alignment with your aligning uh, torque scale as well. So if I have this torque scale up higher, I'm going to have to add a little bit more wheel dampening because my uh, oscillation is going to increase more. I like to have as little wheel dampening as possible, especially for a direct drive wheel, uh, or any wheel really, uh, even a belt driven wheel, because I want the raw feedback from the road. However, Forza does require some dampening to keep your wheel from going nuts on you and you snap it off some fingers, so, uh, or spraining your wrist or whatever. Uh, so you won't get it totally out, even if you went up to, it is 200%, you will not get all the sway the little slight left right left uh, left right left right follow my cursor sway back and forth uh, with the wheel dampener scale so forget about it uh, don't try to chase your tail for that one because you're just not going to get it out it's just inherently in this game but you will minimize it to where when you grab your wheel and you yank it hard to the left uh, it, it, it will snap back to the right and then snap back to the left and usually center on up on itself uh, just fine without going crazy. So your center spring scale, this is the dynamic centering force uh, of your steering wheel. Larger values provide a stronger centering spring while lower provide a centering force. So this one's, let me scroll, oh, I am all scrolled all the way down. Uh, that's different than your aligning torque, but it's just your centering spring torque, bringing your wheel back to center. So I, I generally like a, a modest amount. 85 seems to be working pretty good for me. And uh, try it out though and see if you'd like something different. But these are my settings. Uh, steering sensitivity 100, uh, steering linearity 50%. On my particular wheel, I have to invert the force feedback so it feels right and uh, not reversed so to speak all right i'm going to cancel that because i already have it saved and i will go over to and just show you a talk and drive real quick but i will let you know my assist right now uh this is all with simulation steering uh, all these settings of course does work fine with normal steering but you do have a, a for finally you can actually use simulation steering now and forza 7 that you couldn't before because it was just too wonky feeling and it didn't feel real so now it feels a lot more connected to track based on the settings that they have. I generally run stability control all the time. Traction control I generally run it off. Uh, just I play with it back and forth. A nice thing to consider with traction control on rather is that it still spins up uh, when you overpower the tires too much, but it does settle that down from you having that torque oversteer on some of the more powerful cars that you end up just fighting a dang car left and right, left and right all the time. So, and AI is ruthless, man. AI, Forza really needs to learn how to program AI. <laughs> it's just horrible. This noise that you'll hear in the background, that da -da 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 sounds like I am sending Morse code to to across the country is the AccuForce making a little bit of noise. I am not using motion or anything. Uh, with this setup because I did not want to hamper the feeling that I had through the wheel or over overwhelm my senses and get it wrong for y'all. So, uh, oh, that sucked. Yeah, I hit that curb pretty hard, which is what it would do in a real car. So that simulation steering. But you get a nice jostle through here. Uh, you get some decent road feel and it's not too much torque steer overturning. So going down the straight here now this is the amount of wheel that I'm letting go over the wheel and just letting it go itself that's as much wiggle as I get as you're of course seeing on the screen uh, and if I yank the wheel left right left right real hard you can see it centers up just fine uh, no extra oscillation and stuff and you're gonna get a little bit of this you're just gonna have to live with it with this game you just can't 
get it totally out, or at least I haven't been able to get it totally out. If you do, hit me up in the comments, let me know. But the cars are much easier to drive now uh, with these settings that I'm using. It feels more, you know, linear and more uh, precise with your driving. Uh, if you want to use normal steering instead of simulated steering, that's fine too. I actually suggest that for most people uh, because it adds a little bit more wheel dampening to it. Uh, you will still get that jostle back and forth, unfortunately, but when you get into sticky situations and your car is sliding around the track and you tend to over, overturn or oversteer your car to try to keep it from spinning out, normal steering actually helps a lot for that. So it slows, slows it down, uh, almost gives it a little bit extra, you don't feel the extra weight in the wheel, uh, but it slows down the reaction of the car through the wheel. So it's pretty good as far as that goes. Uh, so yeah, I like it like that. I'll see if I can show you an example here. Um, like coming over here, if I hit this bump, it's a lot easier to get the car suspended. This bump here, oh, I didn't do it. It didn't really do it this time. But usually when I hit that bump just right, if I hit it on the rise of the curve going up, it's definitely a lot harder to keep my car from spinning out on simulation steering than it is from a uh, normal steering. But anyway, that is the settings that I have. It's not a very long video. Hopefully, this will help out everybody out there that is using Forza 7. I actually really enjoy Forza 7 a lot. Uh, and still enjoying it a lot with AccuForce. And like I said, uh, with a Simbop settings, you can get a more of a natural feeling than you do. Uh, without using SimVibe, but for the purpose of this video, I did not do that. Okay, hold on. <laughs> all right, I could just drive this all day long, guys. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. That is it. We will see you on the track next time. I'm out.